Well, we've done. <laughs> well, we've done the other AFC East teams. What happened was. What happened was. So we got to do it. I don't want to talk about them, but we got to talk about them. Bills versus the New England Patriots. Have the Patriots improved their roster more than Buffalo? Welcome to Hashtag Sports. You're looking at the roster. I don't even know who's on the roster. Well, that's the funny thing is we, <clears throat> Mario insists that we use our lads for depth charts as quick reference. Oh, here we go. They they don't even have whole positions filled because <laughs> they're like, that's ah, Belichick. Who cares? Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> um, before we get to the Patriots, though, yeah, and we kind of for- forgot to do this. I just want to do it real quick. Um, those of you that are uh, the channel members, we just wanted to give you guys once again a uh, very special thank you for uh, subscribing to uh, the exclusive content for Hashtag Sports. Yep. We were able to raise, uh, in April, we raised $50 for the Punt Foundation, and this month, uh, month of May, we were able to raise $72 for the Punt Foundation. Solid. Thank you so much for that. The Punt Foundation thanks you. We're throwing that on, on top of the pile of all the... Um, of all the do- cash we're going to donate, uh, you know, in addition to the 2000 that we raised last year with the last four games. So we cannot thank you, uh, Hashtag Nation, enough for being a subscriber. If you want to be one, there's five different levels. They're right below this video. There's a join button. You can click on that and see what kind of levels you like. So Back to our regularly scheduled Patriots. <laughs> I feel so dirty talking about this. All right, so... <laughs> Why don't we just start with the wide receiver position, right? So, Good. the Edelman. Patriots did something. The Edelman, yeah. And done. Okay. Nikhil Harry. That one surprised me. Nikhil Harry. I think it was a kind of a chip to try to keep Brady. You think so? I don't know. I, maybe the they're Patriots, on the rocks for a while. The Patriots are not, you know, it is not rare for them to throw a dart at the wall at a wide receiver. It just never works out. Well, they just never draft in the first round, usually. <laughs> Well, they they also have a tendency to have success with veterans who were cast off, right? So, like, you saw Chris Hogan. They had success with Chris Hogan. Obviously, Randy Moss is just, like, a no-brainer. Everybody thought his career was done after he went to the Raiders. Um, They had success with Randy Moss. What? I got a homework assignment for Hashtag Nation. All right. Really quick. Sure. Go look at Randy Moss's per-game average with Tom Brady. And then look at Randy Moss's per game average with Dante Culpepper. Oh, yeah. Let me know what you guys find. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Homework is on. <laughs> Camera's up there. Sorry. Um, but, yeah, like, everyone thought he was done after Oakland. Um, yeah. A lot of people thought that about Amari Cooper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, because he was a ghost one year. But they uh, they do get cast offs because there's, there's ring chasers. Yeah. And they all go to New England to chase the ring. I don't know if the atmosphere in New England is that way now that Tampa Brady is down trademarking his name down. Well, the I think I think one of the reasons that New England can kind of live life without Brady is because they have McDaniels, right? I think I think that makes a big difference here. Where Brady was kind of running the show for a while there, now that he's not there, you've got an established OC who's been there for a few seasons, former head coach, right? A couple, couple times. He was. Before, <laughs> yeah, a couple times. Um, that stint in Indy wasn't very long. It sure didn't last long. No. Uh, almost as long as Belichick with the Jets. <laughs> was it the Jets that he was? I see to? that video all the time yeah. about him the, with the Jets. That guy. Anyway. <laughs> um, but I think that makes a big difference, right? It's kind of like with Buffalo where you have Dable now entering year three. You... You can acclimate new players because there's already a culture established. Yes. You can go without Brady because you have McDaniels. I'm not saying that Brady isn't, you know, the X factor in the offense. I'm just saying that from a culture perspective, it it translates. What? I have a subtle disagreement with your assessment. Oh, okay. With Brady and McDaniels, mm-hmm. what they established was a successful formula. Uh-huh. Do you feel that Dable and Allen have established that yet? Even though they know what they want to expect from the offense, it hasn't sh- 
fully shown. That's the only difference is I'm not trying to gain enemies here. I'm just trying to get a full understanding. McDaniel's with Brady has been a success. Dable and Allen is still trying to climb that ladder. That's why I kind of disagree with the. I get the point you're trying to make because of continuity and what they expect out of the offense. However, one has been successful, the other hasn't. Didn't uh, Josh McDaniels have Tim Tebow? He did. Then I rest my case. <laughs> like, like oh, I, I'm not saying that he's I, not a he's not a better OC than than Dable. And, and I'm not. I, the point that I'm trying to make here is that if you're going to compare McDaniel's and Brady together, you have to look at what McDaniel's did, did without, Brady. without Brady, and there's just not enough data there, right? No. Because it was Tebow. Right. So yes. Okay. I, okay. You know, I, 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 I don't think there's enough data to say. Yeah, but, I mean, that my issue with Dable, because you're asking the wrong person about my opinion on Brian Dable, if you're if you're going to look for no, something I'm positive just, here, I'm because just trying I don't to think, offer a counter. Well, I, mean? I just don't think Dable utilizes Allen's strengths to the best of for the best of the offense yet, and I keep saying that yet because I don't think Dable really trusts Allen yet, right, to make the right reads pre-snap. I, I think there's a trust issue. There. I think that trust issue goes both ways with both of them. Really? I don't think Allen fully trusts Dave's. Dave's. Good old Dave's. Dave's. Did you see the video that I cut this week? I did. Did you see the little nugget that I put in I there? I saw a little nugget. <laughs> little, no pun intended. A little nugget you put in there as far as <laughs> snack connoisseur or whatever it was. <laughs> Brian Dable, snack expert. Wasn't talking about him at all. I just had to, I just had to drop in a picture of Brian Dable in the video. You just snack love expert. those little like, death of a thousand paper cuts on Brian Dable. <laughs> I think the point still remains that, um, you know, with McDaniels versus uh, Dable... They're in similar paths by the fact that it's already an established offense. Uh, the major difference here is that Dable isn't going through quarterback change McDaniels is. Right? Yeah, and I understand that. And I understand the fact that the the guy that's going to <clears> – <throat> I mean, if you went through Dable's resume prior to Buffalo, if he says, trust this, it'll work, it, it, it hasn't yet. In, in your tenure as an OC, it really hasn't. Now, I know you haven't had a lot of talent. However – if you go to McDaniels now, quarterback that's going into Josh McDaniels, listen, this is the offense that we know works that wins Super Bowls. The, the counter argument there could be, well, you had Brady, okay, but it still worked multiple times. Right. So, I think that's where McDaniels, like you said, has a leg up on Dable is the fact that it has been successful in winning games in Super Bowls. So, what you're saying is that the New England Patriots when we talk about the coaching staff, is the antithesis of the New York Jets. Whereas, not much talent, not much talent in New England, but you got the coaching staff that can that could raise guys up to different levels. New York has all the talent and some guys that are kind of questionable, questionable with the coaching. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. All yeah. Right. All right. But as sure. far as the, the talent that they have, mm-hmm. you got Edelman still there. Right. You got... Um, Muhammad Sanu, Nikhil Harry, and then after that, oh, Marquise Lee is there. Interesting. I like, I like Marquise. He's such Lee a good a route runner. USC guys are always good route runners. That's true. Well, you don't like. You looked at me kind of funny. I thought you were trying to take a shot at Marquise Lee. I was about to get really defensive. <laughs> Listen, if I take a shot at Aaron <laughs> Colvin, you can get mad at me. <laughs> I've been holding the candle for Aaron Colvin for years. <laughs> that sucker's burnt out already. Man. <laughs> did you see my? Uh, did you? See I showed you my uh, quarterback video, right? What quarterback video? Me throwing the ball into the net. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm ready for Allen. Really? No. I think I can hit 65. How far away from the gun are you standing? Yards. <laughs> oh, oh, now you're talking miles per hour. No, God, no. I can't even do it with a fastball. <laughs> baseball. <laughs> but, as, yeah, as far as the Patriots go, the talent that they lost, you lose Van Noy, you lose Collins, you lose a bunch of different guys, both offensively and defensively. The, 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 the infrastructure there. Now, this, because I, I don't really, I know this is going to sound awful to say, I don't count the Patriots like I count Miami and New York, mm-hmm. because you think those two teams are on the rise. Mm-hmm. 
Patriots are going to think about rebuilding. However, this is a personal vendetta between Brady and Belichick, in my eyes. I think they're both out to prove that it was the other one. I Yeah, I think that's very fair. So, Brady goes with probably one of my favorite creative minds ever mm-hmm. in football, Bruce Arians. Yep. Which is just an internal struggle for me because I love Bruce Arians. Um, I watched his f- uh, football life with Bruce Arians. It's, if you haven't watched it, please watch it. It's freaking amazing. Bruce but Arians then, is awesome. Yeah, but then Brady goes with him. He has a ton of weapons mm-hmm. that he didn't have before. Sure Different does. offense, though, now. Um, so now Belichick is out to say, listen, okay, I think Belichick, Belichick may take one this year. Maybe go 8-8, eight 7-9, eight, something like that. Mm-hmm. Brady may have a winning record, but Belichick will then get back on the horse. Well, I, I think it's a little different, right? Because I, I don't want to talk about Brady and versus Belichick, but I, I think it's I think you bring up an interesting parallel. Brady has to learn a new offense, which he's never had to do before. No. Belichick just has to win without Brady, which he's done plenty. He has. So I, the, it's going to be a, a steeper hill for Brady to climb than it will be for Belichick. For Belichick, it's he's done he's been here before. If you right? gave if you gave Belichick Arians roster right now. Oh God! <laughs> I don't even want to be. In the, I don't even want to be in the division. <laughs> okay. I don't want to be in the division. If that was a nice conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back to the Patriots specifically, though. Yeah. Uh, the Bills are returning their entire defense, right? Yes. Plus, plus a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're adding uh, Epineza in there, like you're, you're sprinkling in some new talent. Yes. Right. The Patriots, half their defense is new. It's good. Yes. Right. Um. You have Dante Hightower, who has has actually not as good a player as he is, has progressively produced less and less and less and less. And I don't, I can't really, I don't really understand why, and but he's progressively produced less and less. It could and less. be the talent that's surrounding him as well. You but know, we, the secondary is still there. Yes. And that was the thing that kind of drove the Patriots. He'll get pressure with anybody. Like that's true. Belichick will generate pressure with anybody. It's the secondary that has to hold up. And you still have McCourty, you have Chung, uh, Gilmore is still there, and you and Devin McCourty and both Jason McCourty. McCourty. Yeah. yeah, both McCourty's. Um, and that's still formidable. Like, you want to talk about going through the rest of the division? That's that's a formidable secondary. Mm-hmm. Do I think, is that secondary better than the Bills' secondary? That's a debate. That's a tough one. That's a real solid debate. I think... The Bills will be a the, – the talent on the defensive line is better than in, in New England. But Frazier and McDermott don't really get creative with their pressures. And Belichick has to. Yes. So I, I, I just think it's – I think I think it's just a different dynamic. Wow, the secondary – because where you could tout the secondary for the Bills having experience, you could say that that's a weakness in a way for the Patriots because – these guys are all in their thirties now. Yeah, I believe. Except for I don't think uh, I don't think Gilmore is. No, Gilmore? I think Gilmore's not in his thirties. But all these guys are really in their thirties. They they may, I'm not saying they have. They may have lost a step or two mm-hmm. on certain things that they're doing. But all in all, um, they do have the experience factor and the winning factor and the pedigree and all that stuff. They can get guys where they need to go. Right. Totally understand that. That is a, that is a very enthralling debate to talk about the both secondaries of. Bills and the Patriots. Well, I think personally, if you're going to beat New England, you pound the football down their throat because that's the easiest way to try and beat them right now, right? Mm-hmm. Their offense is is their offense isn't going to blow you away. No. They're just going to whittle away like they always do, right? Yeah. And actually, not having Brady might make them a little bit more dangerous because anything over 15 yards is now in play. Right? So, there's a debate to be made that their offense might be a little bit more dangerous uh, from an explosion factor now that Brady's gone. But, even with that point being made, do the Bills have the, will the Bills have the ability to run the ball and win against New England trying to keep the ball away from that secondary? Because returning the secondary that they are, that's going to keep their pass rush on life support. That, that, their, their secondary returning in whole is going to make that defensive line, that acclimation, a little bit easier. So, to beat New England, do you have to have Moss and Singletary just destroying them? No, what I think you need to do... That's a great point, though. I I, I think that could be a route that the Buffalo Bills will go. Mm-hmm. 
Um, because if you're able to run the ball on any team, it makes everything else so much simpler for your offense. Sure. That's one. Two, um, Belichick has survived and thrived on the fact of unpredictability mm-hmm. and adjustments yep. his entire career. He was unpredictable in some of his defensive schemes when they start a game, and then when you start to adjust to that, he's already adjusted to you at halftime for something else. Yep. So, if the Bills can weather the storm, just like it always is with a Belichick-led team, if you can weather the storm and out-adjust him, which no one really has. No. Well, you have to walk in with almost two different game plans. Yes. And are the Bills equipped to do that? Mm -hmm. Are they? If by the time they face the Patriots, they're throwing the ball 35 times a game and then they run it 40 times, that's a Belichick move. If you out-Belichick Belichick, Belichick, then you're good. I don't know if they would do that. I don't know if it's the gumption of Brian Dable to do such a thing. Well, let me ask you this then. So before it was, you know, you'd see Brady go out and throw 35 times a game and they ran four wide the whole game. And then the next game, they're double tight the whole time. You know, double tight, two backs. and They have one game game plans. That's what they do. Right. Yeah. But will a young quarterback or an inexperienced quarterback be able to make those week-to-week changes? I think he'd have to. Well, we haven't seen it in two years, though. Brissett sur- survived. But, the, but the, the difference there is that when Brissett was, you know, the quarterback for the Patriots, the game plan was didn't really the, the formations didn't change that much from week no, to week. No. It wasn't as dramatic. I they like did, Brissett, they did do, man. I do like Brissett. I, I think he's an effective quarterback. But the 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 offensive sets that they ran didn't really change as much as with Brady. With Brady it was one week they were gonna do something, the next week it could be something completely different. Belichick did everything he could to make the tape you watched useless. Brady had an hundred like a, over hundred and eighty games uh, a, a bag of tricks to adjust to yeah, anybody. Right. You know, you weren't confusing Brady. Like, as much as I don't like Brady, I've n- I will never, ever call him stupid. Right. He's one of the smartest quarterbacks in the league. Mm-hmm. You have to be to survive that long. And one of the reasons why he was the, one of the smartest quarterbacks is because he stayed with Belichick very long. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the smartest move he could have did. However, um, that bag of tricks that he had to rely on, the quarterback, whoever plays quarterback for the New England Patriots now is not going to have that. Right. So McDaniels will be called on even more. I think this will be a true testament on how how good of a coach McDaniels is because if they're able to have a winning record this year, the Patriots, because the, I think a lot of the people forget about the mystique now. Mm-hmm. I think they're, they're kind of gone with the mystique that may have left with Brady. Right. However, if they're able to have a winning record and they're able to produce points offensively, McDaniels is gone. You or, think McDaniels will leave? Or, or... He may take, take over, over Belichick. Yeah, that's what I see. I see. I think. I think Belichick got McDaniel's back and dangled that carrot and got him to leave the head coaching offer that he accepted. Because he said, "I got two more years left." And because I'm done. he's like, "Hey, listen, you know, I'm done let's when just, Brady's done. Let's just see. Let's just see how this works." Because yeah. Belichick has something to prove right now, he, but he can't walk away from the organization. He's the, he's the general manager. He's not yeah. going to just walk away. Yeah. We showed, but it's funny how. How much of a stake he put in the draft? You know, he's just dog sitting on his computer chair. It explained a lot. <laughs> he, I love that he was trolling everybody. Oh yeah, absolutely trolling everybody. Absolutely, could not care. No, he could not care less about the pomp and circumstance of the NFL draft. He did not. Care. Oh, so funny. But yeah, it's you want to go roster to roster. I think other than the secondary, I, I don't think you have much. Comparison. I think the Bills outweigh the, the Patriots in their uh, overall roster. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm 100% with you. And the only, the only, the only bit that I'm like nervous about is the fact that I'm still, you cannot convince me otherwise. If you take Dante Hightower's contract and you give him a two year extension, when he's 27, right? You mm-hmm. give him a two year extension. You take his base salary, turn the whole thing into signing bonus, right? You free up $7 million, right? Mm-hmm. How much do you think Cam Newton will play for? Five? Don't. Listen, I'm just saying, the money's there. They got $1 million in cap space now, but you extend out to Hightower, which you're probably doing anyway. You extend him two years, turn his base salary into a signing bonus. Boom, you just made $7 million. You get Cam Newton for a year. What's the worst that could happen? You win? <laughs> right? What's the worst that could happen? 
Excuse me. Why do you do this to them? <laughs> Why do you do this? We can't. Paul.